following is a dramatization inspired by the life of Barbara Graham. Certain events have been fictionalized. Seven. That's right, hot fudge, but she just picked at it. 
Well, maybe she's counting calories. Huh? One source says red pajamas. Another says she slept raw. Choose one. Emmett Perkins and Jack Santor, who with Barbara Graham were sentenced to die for the savage slaying of Mabel Monahan, spent their last evening on Earth watching Groucho Marx and You Bet Your Life on TV. Arthur, check federal court. Barbara's lawyers applied for a stay. Well, sure, it's a last-minute stay. What other kind do you go for when your client's due to take the gas in less than an hour? Yeah, well, they won't let her see anybody. Well, I'll try it. Well, keep the line open. Captain Paul! Here it is. The icy nerve killer spent her last night in red baby doll pajamas. Captain Paul, could I talk to Barbara? Why not? You're immediate family, aren't you? You know I'm not. You're not? You've been writing like you were sisters. You can see her at the main event. If you stay. I'm staying. What was that? Uh, you don't know? Just setting up for my going away party. You know what? I think we could use some music in here. I don't understand you people getting ready to kill me, but we need music. Right, we do need music. <laughs> need music. How do I look? You look terrific. Yeah, even the people who called me a killer never said I was a lousy dresser, huh? You know, with the earrings I was concerned about, I almost wore these. But, uh, these would be good for you. Why don't you take these? Oh, oh no, Barbara. I couldn't. I mean, your husband might want Oh, them. come on. They're not his color. Look, if they were worth anything, I'd have sold them ten minutes after I got them. Okay? But they're kind of pretty. Take them. What time is it? I thought we weren't going to talk about that. How are you feeling, Barbara? What do you think? <laughs> What's that? If you slip your jacket off, I'll fit this to your blouse. It's a stethoscope. The hell it is. Where, where's, the, where's the part you listen to? Oh, right. I'm on the inside, you're on the outside. Huh? Huh? Okay. What time is it? Barbara, I didn't ask you how long I had left. I just said, what time is it? 9.30. Where's Father Charles? He'll be here. I don't want to get nervous while I'm going out there. Would you just give me a shot of something, you think? Barbara, I don't think I can do that. Gordon, would you tell him to give me a shot of something? I'm not going to get hooked. Yes, you can have one if you need it, but not now. Barbara, the state court has given you a stay. Uh, well, I, I don't know. State court? I don't know. My, my attorney said it, said it was a federal court. What, a state? Well, all I know is it's a state court of appeals. Well, I, I guess it doesn't really matter, huh? As long as somebody can see what they're doing to me. How long is the stay? I'm sorry. I have no idea. Oh. Barbara, I'm sorry about the uncertainty. I hate last-minute stays. It's easy for you to say. I'm sorry. Look, is there anything I can do? I need to be alone. Could, could, could I just be alone? Of course. Uh, for as long as possible. Hmm? Mr. and Mrs. Cooley from Oxnard. How do you do? Has she ever done housework? Uh, oh, I, I mean a wayward girl. We take care of our rooms here. But I'm a really good cook. Oh, oh well, I do the cooking. <laughs> we have three little ones. Uh, how do you feel about that? I like children. She's awfully pretty, Miss Payne. I mean, will she stay with us? She'll have to stay for a year, Mrs. Cooley. We'll take her. Folks, Barbara will meet you out at the gate. We'd like a few minutes to say goodbye. What's 
wrong, Barbara. I thought you'd be happy. I don't know. I hate housework, Miss Bain. It's part of being a wife. Oh. Well, you want to get married, don't you, and have a family of well, your own? sure, but after? After what? You know what my childhood was all about. Barbara, what I know is it's over. Don't go looking for the fun you missed. Learn how to make a good wife, find a good man and do it. Believe me, it's the only way. The only way, Miss Bain? For you, Barbara, it is. Do your best with the coolies. I will. Miss Bain, thank you for everything. How about tonight? I got my draft notice. I can't sit around waiting. Well, maybe you should enlist. Hey, Barb. I didn't mean... I'll be waiting, huh? Still up. Um, Mrs. Cooley wanted me to tell you that uh, her sister's back went out and she went up to Ventura to help out. She'll be back tomorrow afternoon, sure. She won't be back tonight? Tomorrow afternoon, sure. Good night, Mr. Cooley. Uh, hold it. Uh, come on. Let's uh, have a nightcap. Um, I have to get the kids off to school in the morning. It's not that late. Mr. Cooley, I need this job. That ain't all you need. Don't do this. Oh, still. Please don't do this. I said, hold still. Please don't do oh, this. Oh, still. Don't. Why, you oh, little... Don't come near me. If I yell, those kids are going to come downstairs, and they will ask questions, and I will have answers. Don't you go out and leave those kids. I will be back in the morning to get them off to school. Now, if Roy wets the bed, don't holler at him. He's going through a stage. Barbara. Jerry, this is your lucky night. I pronounce that they are husband and wife. <laughs> whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> well said, Reverend. No, oh, you thank you indeed. Uh, a little libation. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Cheer up, brother. It's a man. Good luck, Barbara. What's a small thing like parole compared to the happiness of a bride and a mother-to-be, especially since Dad's got his sailing orders? Thank you, Mr. Cooley. Wine, everybody? Ah! Congratulations, Mrs. Henderson. Thanks, <laughs> Remember what I said about not rushing into marriage? Well, forget it, dear. Be happy. I will. And thank you for everything, Mrs. Cooley. And me. Wine? <laughs> oh, the one yes. with the ribbon for the bride. <laughs> you be good to her now, sailor. That's an order. <laughs> Barefoot and pregnant. Ah, that's the trick. Well, you're halfway there. <laughs> that was a beautiful hey, Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> she hardly ever cries. Well, she naps for about two hours after her lunch. Then she just wakes up happy as a little clown. You'll see. What happened, Barbara? I thought you and my boy loved each other. Well, maybe we did. I guess the marriage just didn't take. Of course, then he went overseas, so... I guess I'm just old-fashioned. 
My day mothers didn't abandon babies even for a little while. Well, mine did. You know, I was in and out of foster homes most of my life. And even when I did live with my mother, my father was the only one that ever cared about me. And he died when I was eight years old. And my mother, she turned around and she you said to me, she said, stop bawling. He's not your real father anyway. Sorry. I'm sorry. Let me give it to you next time, okay? Okay. No good here. Why don't you guys go sink Tojo's fleet? Huh? <laughs> hey, babe. Plant you now, dig you later. Okay? <laughs> uh, you're the first seagull I ever see. Want to buy their own drink? First what? Seagull. You don't follow the fleet. I'm here about the cook's job. Who do I see? Me. But you gotta be crazy. I'm a good cook. I don't need good. Well, I need some rum dum to fry burgers for 80 cents an hour. You can do better than that. Yeah? How? Hustling drinks from the guys. <laughs> Look, this is for real. And it's on me. From here on in, the guys will be buying you sugar water. It's a lot more fun on that side of the bar. Here's the minesweeper Hiram J. Frost. How about your place? Okay. Um, uh, my room rent's due. I forgot to go to the bank today. My landlady's going to be waiting out for the hand extended. Suppose you could cash a check for me? I mean, it's $11? Yeah, sure, I can handle that. But first, I got to hit the head. Bum checks are bad news, sweetie. We'll ship out before it clears. <laughs> My mother will ship out before it clears. Why don't you just have him leave the money on the bureau? Look, I go with a guy because I like him. You understand that? And I gotta live like everybody else. Okay, but watch it. You're no good to me in jail. Hey, hey, 
you mind? What are you Trust doing? Trust me. If you want a drink, pal, I'll drop you in the bay. <laughs> Could have fooled me, lady. Sorry. What is that? He's looking for B-girls. The sugar water's the tip off. Thank you. How are you one, right? You look a little pale. You just might need a little more red meat in your diet. Oh, a ration book. Why are you so good to me? No time to get off. Sorry. I go home with a fellow that brung me, honey. Oh, it's okay, Barb. Why go on duty at midnight? In that case, I get off at 2 a.m. It's closing hours. What'd you have in mind? I hate traveling alone. I gotta make a little business trip down to Tijuana. Strictly business. That'll be up to you. See your purse, miss. Look all you want, I'm clean. It's funny, we know a lot of guys who call you a wholesale source of ration books and gas stamps. I know guys who call you a whole lot worse, but I'm clean. Maybe you delivered the stuff to a drop in Tijuana. say it doesn't matter. You're under arrest. For what? Well, if we can't find anything else, this will do it. This is a receipt for a double room at Posada La Corrida. Oh, is that bad? Oh, I'm sure it was fun. But it's a clear violation of the Mann Act. Interstate or international transportation of a woman for immoral purposes. I'd say uh, five years. Maybe we can do better. Don't! Yeah. All right, let's go. Hold it. I bought the gas. I paid for the hotel. <laughs> the hell you did. Sure, babe, you stick to your story, and your roomie will beat the Man Act rap, but you, you'll be facing lewd vague, illegal cohabitation, Prostitution? They're bluffing, Barbara. They got nothing on me. You don't have to do this. They aren't bluffing, and I owe you one. I'm not going to do five years. Young woman, before I pass sentence, I've been informed by the people that they are prepared to recommend minimum sentence if you will agree to cooperate in the investigation of a more serious crime. I'm confident that if you were represented by counsel, he would advise you to do so. Let the record show the defendant stands mute. 
Sentence is hereby set at one year in the county jail, not to be eligible for parole until she has served 90 days. Young lady, I hope that this experience will cause you to equip yourself to seek legitimate, respectable employment. The State of California versus Pedro Gonzalez. Case number 59847. You do have a talent, all right. What a waste. What do you mean? Well, it's just that uh, with looks like yours, you don't need a talent. Mr. Saxon, about the job, I was just wondering. Mm. Mm. This is good. Good, thank you. Are you ready to travel? Listen, I don't want these people around here to know that I'm branching out. There's how many of these California-type restaurants around here? Hundreds? Well, I get probably more than that. And in Chicago, none. Now, I figured that a real California restaurant on the north side, with fake palm trees, real flowers, a nice open feel, I about into a place there. Are you interested? Yes, I'm interested. I'm also flat broke. I mean, I walked here, but I can't walk to Chicago. <laughs> well, Saxon's cook don't walk. You go in a compartment. I'm the chief. At my expense. Something big. I don't think it's a very good idea to mix business with anything else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Working a restaurant is like manning a lifeboat. You gotta be close. Real close. Shut the door. You're not really branching out, are you, Mr. Saxon? Well, the deal isn't set yet, but I'm working on it. Just want a little company on your way to work, huh? What's bothering you? Don't like a good time? Oh, yeah, I do. I do. As a matter of fact, that's why I'm getting off the train at the next stop. <laughs> you cool off, sweetie. The next stop is Winslow, Arizona. Have you ever been broke in Winslow, Arizona? No, I haven't, and I don't intend to be. I'm going to San Francisco. Ooh, that's a long walk. Oh, I, I didn't say anything about walking. Um, you're going to give me $200 severance pay. <laughs> <laughs> you're out of your head. Why should I give you anything? <laughs> because we're already in Arizona. You ever heard of the Mann Act? It's the interstate or international transportation of a woman for immoral purposes. I say five years. Now, pay your tab like a gentleman, then get out of here so the lady can get dressed and packed. Jim. Barbara. <laughs> oh. <Hi. laughs> I'm so sorry I'm late. I can't believe you tracked me down all the way from San Diego. Hey, you took a ramp for me. Oh, that's what you remember. Huh? What do you remember? Well, I remember a lot of things. I remember three wild Mexicans playing La Paloma on the top of that registration desk in that crazy flea bag hotel. I also remember the look on a little boy's face when you bought me a tiger and you told him to keep the change. Yeah, those were the days. Yeah. It's a frame, Barbara. Can you see me doing armed robbery? I'm scared of guns. You and me both, but how did you... How did your fingerprints get on the liquor store counter? Uh, it's from when I was in earlier, buying beer. You know when the manager fingers me with the stick-up? I figure he robbed his own till. Barbara, I need somebody to go an alibi. 
I, I wasn't even in San Francisco at the time, Jim. I was traveling. Great. Then nobody knows where you were. So if you say we were together, who's to say no? Do this for me, Byrne. Please. All right. Why not? But I'm not going to do it just for you. I'm going to do it because I'm crazy about tigers. And you're the only guy that ever bought me one. still here. Listen, my broad's lying. She wasn't with that guy that night. She was with me on the Santa Fe Chief in Compartment D, Car 2. Well, uh, well, listen, I, I can't afford to get involved. You can prove this without me, can't you? You've pleaded guilty to perjury. Now, even if I accept your statement that you believed your friend was innocent, perjury is a most serious crime. I sentence you to one year in the county jail, and thereafter, probation will be for a further five years. Hey, what's with the pace, Edie? You trying the last mile for size? Well, the turn the last mile is Eastern. Sing Sang and electric chairs. Out here, it's the last 30 yards. It's, it's California for you. Nobody walks. Why don't you guys stow the front page dialogue? How often does a woman get killed? Only once, baby. Uh-oh. Ladies and gentlemen, would you follow me, please? Barbara, I'm sorry. The stay's been vacated. You, you mean now? That's what he means. Terrific. Well, thank you. It's been a long time since I've worn heels. Huh? I'd like um, Shirley and good Mrs. Murphy. That's what we used to call it when we were kids. As the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I would fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and surely and goodness is my favor follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Warden. Yes, thank you. Barbara, it's another stay. Oh, God. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Go back to the press room and wait. Mrs. Graham has been granted another stay. Is it a lawyer this time? Yes. How long's the stay, Warden? Long enough for him to make his argument. Oh, that man can argue. Barbara, you've got a chance. You're getting a chance, Barbara. Understand? Getting a chance. Don't waste it. I'll try not to. Some people don't approve of parole and perjurers. Perjurers have already lied, and parole means word. We take your word that you'll abide by the terms. No criminal associates, no drinking, and you report to me here weekly. Were you thinking of leaving San Francisco? I mean, I can't even think about it. If you don't report, you break parole, and you'll do the rest of your time. Got it? Got it.
sure I'm glad my mama can't see me now having a drink with a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, two, if you will. There you go. <laughs> right out in public, too. <laughs> Want to know something? This is the first time that I ever, uh, I guess being away from home makes me a little crazy. Well, you are crazy if you think I'm gonna let you cash my check. <laughs> I'm just gonna go to the bank in the morning like a good little girl. <laughs> no, no, you said that'd make you late for work. Absolutely not. No, no, please, I insist. Well, well, all right. You think 30'd be all right? Oh, that's just fine, yeah. Get that ashtray, please, sir. Oh, excuse me. Oh, 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 my clock. God, are you all right? God. There's a cop. Brand new suit, I don't believe this. Here you go, sir. I'll get you a fresh man. Look here. Look at this. I found a $20 bill in my purse. I had it all the time. Isn't that nice? Now we don't have to mess up our friendship with ugly old money. Why'd you do it, Henry? Why'd you take a chance for somebody you didn't even know? Do you want the truth? Yeah. I like your looks. And I had a hunch you couldn't stand any more trouble. Good hunch. I'm on parole out of San Francisco. One bust, I'm back in the bucket. It wasn't exactly a hunch. I uh, spent most of my life on the hustle. Cops coming out of my ears. Uh, I know the signs. Want to know something? Uh, last night when you said cop, I was really scared. I mean, it wasn't just of the rap or the jail time. It was of my whole life. I felt as if I was on a merry-go-round or something, and, 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 and I was scared to keep riding, and I was scared to get off. <sighs> I can understand that. I mean, I really know how you feel. See, once I wanted... <sighs> I don't know what I wanted but I know what I want now. I want a house, just like this one, with my wife making coffee and bacon in the morning so I'm not late for work. I want a little dog, some kids, and a lawnmower. Gotta have a lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that used to be my idea of hell. <laughs> now it sounds like music. I never said this to nobody. It isn't easy. See, I've done some things that I'm ashamed of. See, that's from Horace, but no more. You know, I'll, I'll never be rich, but I'm a decent guy, and I want to marry you. Right there. This belongs to my little girl. She's eight years old. I don't know if she remembers it or me. So it was with her grandmother. She could live with her mother and her stepfather. Oh, Henry, I want that so much. I just don't know. Oh, you don't really know me. You don't know what kind of husband I'd make, what kind of father I'd make. Oh, I'd take a chance on that. It's just that my kid lives in a house with a with a lawn. I don't want to bring her to a place like this. Got a hunch yours is much better. What about the house we saw this morning? Well, you think big, I'll give you that. I can handle $65 a month. Great. What about the $1,500 down? I know where we can get it. It'd be easy. I mean, I won't kid you, it'd be a hustle. Could be our last hustle. I don't know, Henry, I don't know. I swear to God, I'm scared, I am. <laughs> it's not scary. Honey, there's a guy for you to talk to. And after that, whatever you decide, it's just 
you and me. If you want it that way. Well, how much I do know. I want it that way. Come in. Uh, Barbara, meet Jack Santo and Emmett Perkins. How do you do? You have impeccable taste, Henry. Yeah. Well, well, what's this? This is my playroom. I like to think that I provide a service for the traveler far from his weekly poker game. And the cops have it taken care of, right, Emmett? The, the Henry. Did I fall with the last rain? <laughs> <clears throat> well, my dear, you care to join our merry band? Uh, Henry, you did explain to her what we wanted to do for us, didn't you? I know what I wanted to do for me. Hey, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jack. You're in the presence of an engaged couple here. Even if I wasn't with him, you're still not my type. Is that so? I heard there's not really no such thing as not your type. Till now. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> anyway, Barbara, uh, we need a social director. I mean, Jack here seems to have lost his shyness, but uh, him and me can hardly go up to people on the street and suggest to poker anyone. <laughs> you need a shill. Hmm? Shill. Uh, well, if you insist on such a vulgar term, <laughs> yeah. You bring us live ones and you get 25% of what they lose. What if they win? Huh. I'm not making a career out of this. We need 1,500. Henry explained that to me. And uh, I'm always touched by domesticity. Quit whenever you like. The question is, when can you start? How about tonight? Beautiful. Mr. Wallace, they're playing and they've got an empty seat. Let's go. Hold it. These guys play table stakes. It can get pretty high. You think you can handle it? Ma'am, I invented the game. All right. Mm -hmm. oh, that's fine. A quarter of ten. <laughs> okay. Who are you going to love, La Fontaine, Doctor? Well, it's, it's sort of French. And, no, no, go easy on the wine, okay? I want you razor sharp for that game afterwards. Okay. Yes, me too. I can't wait. Bye. Will you stop? Can't wait. You have to break that on the wall. you crazy? It's okay. Now. <laughs> I'm so happy. I can't even believe it's happening sometime. So we got a bride working for us. What's got to do with this? Big deal. He's right, Emmett. She's going to be good for us. Oh, yeah, sure she is. The nickel and dime gambling. But let's talk about this job. When are we going to hit that house? As soon as the old lady's safe is full of cash, which should be soon. Yeah, well, that's not soon enough for me. Gentlemen, has it occurred to you that old lady Monaghan lives alone and that after dark she doesn't open the door for anyone? So we open it. Well, maybe we use a woman. My car broke down. Could I please use your telephone? remember you, Mrs. Cooley. How are you? How are the children? Oh, they're just so fine. <laughs> Gosh. 
Oh, that's some baby. Isn't he wonderful? Oh, that's... he's cutting a tooth already. Can you believe it? Oh, it's just so good to see you, Barbara. How's the? Oh, oh, I've forgotten his name. Isn't that terrible? Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid that was a lifetime ago. Oh. I'm married to a fellow now in the restaurant business. Well, sort of. But what are you doing in L.A.? Is Mr. Cooley with you? Oh, I uh, live here now. Uh, I went back to work uh, after he left me. It's, uh, it's been two years. <laughs> I'm sorry. Things like that happen. They do. Believe me, I know they do. You know. <laughs> My baby. My baby. Isn't he wonderful? How old is it? What are you doing at home? Did you get fired? Uh, business was just, just a little slow. Um, yeah, and I know it was slow in the last place, too. Uh, look, look, my luck is just running bad, all right? What are you looking for, Henry? You're turning the place upside down. Just a few bucks. I mean, some walking around money. We don't have any money. You haven't worked in five weeks. And it's got to be money because you've been back shilling for Perkins again. Because we haven't had a dime in this house. So now there is money. Just tell me where it is, will you? I blew it on baby food. <laughs> All I need is $10. No, I know why you want it. I lost my job. Now I just need a little lift. You are hooked, Henry. Don't give me this stuff about our money. Just let me have the money, will you? No! No! I am not going to support your habit! I, I am doing it! Last bill. Take it. Get out and don't come back. Mabel Monahan, widow about 60. Lab will tell us how long she's been dead. We found her in a closet, beaten to death, uh, pistol whipped, I'd say. Her face is almost gone. After 28 years, I don't see much that makes me sick. But this, uh... Any idea who did it? Not yet. But we'll find out. Excuse me. I know about this place. We gotta move again. Move where? I don't want to be too far from Jimmy. Start packing. What is this? We have moved three times in the last two weeks. 
Okay, okay, so we gotta move. Somebody pay the electric bill with a rubber check. Attention! Attention! This is the police! This is the police! All you people in the factory, come out quickly! She was tailed. The place is crawling with cops. That dame let herself get tailed. No, no, it was true, Tipton. No, it was her, damn it. This is the police. We are authorized by law to apprehend you dead or alive. Dead or alive. If you wish to surrender peaceably, come out singly as your names are called. Hands locked behind your head. Emmett Perkins. Come out, Emmett Perkins. Well, I, for one, am going to comply with their request, and uh, I urge you to do the same, Jack. Barbara? Maybe you did worse than get tailed here. Maybe you even asked him here. All right, you want to see the engraved invitation? Do I want to see it? Huh? You pig, stop! Don't just call me a pig. Don't you raise your hand if you mean it. You hear me? Don't stop! John R. Santo. Come out, John R. Santo. lady. San Francisco wants you for parole violation. L.A. wants you for bad checks. And Burbank wants to talk to you about the murder of Mabel Monaghan. Move. I tell you, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Barbara, do you know a man named John True? I know a lot of guys. Yeah, well, this one knows you. Barbara True said that he was in on the job with Perkins, Santo, and you. He said you killed the Monaghan woman. Well, he's a liar. Oh, now you remember it. He's lying if he said I was there. No! You heard the old lady had a safe full of money. She wouldn't tell you where it was, so you smashed the life out of her. You pounded her face and it made me puke just to look at the pictures. You want the same thing? You want me to fix your face so it makes people puke? Well, I can do that. That's how you get your kicks. Such! About your friends, Perkins and Santo. Did you know that they killed a man and his two kids and his neighbor's kid up in the hills a while back? Did you know that? No, I didn't. Don't you knew they were on the lamb when you hold up with them? I told you that. Well, tell us again! I couldn't stay at home. I, I was broke. I'd hung some paper. I knew that busted my parole. Look, all I knew about Perkins and Santo was I used to work for Perkins. Yeah, shilling. Of course, shilling. You ought to know your people protected the game. Never mind that. Then what happened? 
Then I had to leave my baby with a friend. And Mrs. Cooley... Now, who's she? She's a woman I used to work for about ten years ago, that's all. I ran into her a couple of weeks ago on the street. Okay, okay. Now, you stashed your baby with a friend. Now, how did you get together with Perkins and Santo? I went to Perkins' place, and he told me that he and Santo were hot, but I could travel around with them. Of course, it never occurred to you to ask why they were hot. Well, why I they were why hot. they were hot. I needed a place to stay. Haven't you ever been broke before? Yeah. But never crazy enough to do something like that. We've gone as far as we can here. Booker. Murder mob. Why not? Perkins and Sato killed that family in the hills for short money. Thanks and she wasn't in on that job. Look, Edie, three people is a mob. If two of them did a hill killing, they're the mountain murder mob. If one of them is a female, she's queen of the mob. You got it? Excuse me. Steve, how come there isn't a king of the mob? You know what frosts me? She's not going to get tried for what she did. It's what she was. A woman in and out of jails and a lot of beds. But how many beds did Santo get into? Or you, for that matter. Hey, that's getting a little personal, isn't it? You know something? You should play her for innocent. Believe me, I will. As long as you play her for female. And don't get noble. You'll get more ink running alone than you will back in the pack that's looking to chew her up. That is not what I was trying Look, to Edie, do. Edie, sweetheart, relax, will you? We're all whores, huh? Only you're smart enough to pick the side of the street where there's no competition. No offense, Mr. Brady, but wouldn't I do better with the public defender? Yes, you sure would. He's got staff, and budget, and investigators. You see, I'm volunteer counsel. I get $500 for everything, including my fee. Doesn't seem like a fair fight, does it? Me and my $500 against the whole state. Then why can't I have the public defender? Why? Because Drew made a deal. They'll dismiss the charges against him in return for his testimony. And part of the deal is that he gets the public defender, and the public defender does not defend two people with adverse interests. Well, why not? He's got, he's got lots of lawyers in his office. Barbara, you want a course in law, or shall we talk about your defense? Now, True says that you pistol-whipped Mrs. Monahan to death while he tried to stop you. And the others fanned out looking for that safe. I wasn't there, Mr. Brady. I was not there. Pistol whips somebody. <laughs> Makes me sick just to think about it. Why is True doing this to me? Well, in order for him to get free, he has to tell them exactly what they want to hear. Why me? We're wasting our time. He's going to hang it on you in court. Now, Barbara, where were you that night? March 9th, where were you? Who remembers that long ago? I, I, I think it was the night that I fought with my husband and he left me. Um, I was home. Was anybody else there? This is my baby. I see. So your husband is gone and your baby is too young to talk and you think it was that night? I'm pretty sure. True is not going to be pretty sure. He's going to be sure. He's going to say, there she is, and she did it. Now, you've got to have somebody to back up your story. Did anybody come over? Anybody call? Did you go out for a, a beer, a newspaper, something? No. All right. So, a night at home alone. You say. You say but nobody to corroborate what you're telling me. No, Bomber, I'm sorry, but I find that very difficult to believe. And for a jury, impossible.
I talked to my friend. And? His name's Sam. He'll go your alibi, but it'll cost you. I get the 500 as soon as you get out, right? I can raise it then, yes. Okay. How's this? March 9th? Hmm? Hey, you're the girl I spent the night with. Valley View Motel. I picked you up about 8 uh, at your house on... Uh, Innes, right by sunset. Innes. And you were in what? You were driving... 49 Blue Chevy Coupe. Okay. We went straight to the motel and stayed till 7 a.m. Registered at Mr. and Mrs. J. Clark. Clark, okay? Night desk guy is a friend of mine. Uh, where was your husband? Oh, he, he left me. That's why I could fool around. Huh? Oh, good, yeah. And I'm married, which is why I didn't come forward sooner. And then I heard that your life was at stake, so... Is it ever? Hey... Not anymore. Oh, uh, one other thing. Uh, where were you really that night? I think that was the night my husband walked out on me. Mm. Mm. I suppose it wasn't. I, mean, I suppose you were in some joint and somebody saw you. Shows up after I say we were together. Then you're okay, but I go down for perjury. That's a tough rap. Yeah, I know. It's too tough for me. I, uh, I can't take that chance. Well, then what are you doing here? Because I figured you were there at the Monaghan place. I mean, why else would you need an alibi? That puts me in the clear. My word against John Shrew, see? But this way, I... I can't help you, Barbara. Mr. Brady? Yes. Uh, Can I talk to you for a minute? Yes. Walk me to my car. Tell me something. Now, this state's only gas two women, ever. How come the DA's so hot to get Barbara? Well, he really wants Santo and Perkins. They're real killers. Now, follow this. True puts the gun in her hand. If she doesn't die, can the state gas Santo and Perkins for the same crime? Not likely. That's why he's got to nail her to get them. Has she got a chance? Only if she can convince the jury that she wasn't there. All rise. The Superior Court in and for the County of Los Angeles. The state of California is now in session. The Honorable Charles W. Pricky presiding. God save this Honorable Court. Please be seated. <coughs> Mr. District Attorney. The people move for dismissal against John L. True for the purpose and solely for the purpose of using him as a witness in this case. Let the record show that it is so ordered. I call John L. True. Please rise and place your right hand on this Bible. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. <laughs> Please be seated. What is your occupation? A deep sea diver. You know the defendants, Jack Santo, Emmett Perkins, and Barbara Graham? Yes, sir, them three over there. Just tell us, in your own words, how you came to meet them. I met Mr. Santo in Grass Valley. We drove down to L.A. together in his car. I wanted to die for abalone. He had business. He arranged for me to meet the others. What was that meeting about? Well, they told me that Mr. Perkins was a box man. I asked him what that was. Did he make apple boxes? Or... <laughs> well, he told me that he blew open safes and they were going to blow one if I wanted to come along. Did he tell you anything else about the job? He said it would be in a vacant house and no one would get hurt. So I said, OK. I waited across the street next to a telephone pole. Mrs. Graham went up to the front door and rang the doorbell. When I saw the door open, Mr. Santo, Mr. Perkins, and myself rushed across the street and went in. What was happening when you went in? Well, Mrs. Graham had the old lady by the throat with her left hand like this. 
With her right hand, she had the gun, and she was smashing her in the face. What did you do? I yelled at her to stop. I put my arm in between them both, and the old lady collapsed against me. I took her head and put it in my lap, and Mrs. Graham came around the other side and put a pillowcase over her head. You wanted to see me? Yeah. I've been thinking. You're on my side, right? I told you that the first time we met and again yesterday. Okay. I was there. I was at the Monaghan house when it happened. Now, we got a deal? Yeah. We got a deal. So, I understand that you were there primarily to see a safe blown open. Well, sir, a lot of deep-sea diving has to do with opening safes. Yes, but uh, you didn't think that you were going to a job that would be underwater, did you? Is it fair to say that you went to this job to improve your skills as a deep-sea diver? More or less. More or less. And you were also promised a share of the loot, right? Yes, sir. Sort of an earn-as-you-learn program. But it was important to you that nobody be at home and there could not be violence. Yes, sir. Yet just before you got to the house, you heard Perkins say to Barbara, ring the bell, whoever answers it, grab him, and we'll move in. Now, didn't that give you the idea that somebody might be at home? Well, I thought about that, yes. Yes. And you also testified that at about the same time, Emmett Perkins handed you a forty-five and told you, don't you come back without this, or I'll see you in hell. That's right. Well, then, why did you accept the gun? Uh, well, I don't understand. I don't understand. Nobody home, and you're going to get in by ringing the bell. Your Honor. And I don't understand no violence, but you took along a gun. Your Honor. And I don't understand how you could allow a man like this to put his hand on the book and tell you these things to ready. Sorry, Your Honor. Now, if you did not intend violence, why did you accept the gun? Well, you know, I've often wondered about that myself. <laughs> no further questions. I have often wondered about that myself. And not one laugh from the jury. Plenty of laughs in the press section, though. They may have laughed, but they will go right on with their stories and their pictures. Was this the last face Mabel Monahan saw? Did these hands kill? Am I Santos or Perkins' girl? The answer is neither one, but what business is it of theirs? They're just using you to sell newspapers. My editor says I'm doing the same thing. It's a different story. They're using me by pushing me toward the gas chamber. At least you're using me by, by writing the truth. The D.A. is using me to get Santo and Perkins. True is using me to get out from under, and Santo and Perkins are using me as a shield. Everybody is using me. But no more. No more. Barbara, Jack Brady swore me to secrecy. He says you got an alibi. I bet I do. I wasn't with Henry that night. I was with a man named Sam Cooper. And when the time comes, he'll testify. Now, Mr. Brady says that that's all I need for him to walk me out of this place. The state calls Samuel Cooper. Samuel Cooper, isn't he your witness? Why is he testifying for them? I don't know. Place your right hand on this Bible. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Please be seated. What is your occupation, sir? Sergeant, Los Angeles Police Department. About six weeks ago, did the district attorney's office give you a special assignment? So 
Sergeant, <coughs> why did it take three visits to Mrs. Graham to work out this simple alibi that you provided her? Like I testified, it took time to uh, work it out. And isn't it true that it wasn't until the third visit that Mrs. Graham agreed to your bizarre demand. Objection, he's A bizarre demand that she admit that she was at the Monahan's place. Sustained. Let me put it this way. Did you work out the alibi in the first 10 minutes and then devote the rest of the time persuading Mrs. Graham to say into your wire recorder that she was at the Monahan house? Like I testified, it took time to hammer it out. No further questions. Now, Barbara, after your husband left, what did you do? I, um, I put Jimmy to bed, and, well, he was crying. He was my son. And did you leave that crying infant and rush over to the Monaghan house? No. Have you ever been to the Monaghan house? No, never. Mrs. Graham, what did I tell you after you told me that your husband probably would not be available to testify? You said that uh, if I said I was home alone that night without anybody to back it up, it would probably be fatal. And did I repeat that advice in a letter? Yes, you did. Was that letter read by anyone else before you Your Honor, you she can't it? possibly know it. What did it say on the envelope besides your name and address? There was a stamp that said censored. Uh -huh. And what did the word censor mean to you? Mr. Brady, yes. what she thinks the word means has no possible relevance, so would you please get on with your examination? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. All right. Uh, now, a few days after you received that letter cautioning you that you needed a witness as to your whereabouts that night, did another prisoner offer to arrange an alibi for you? Yes. Thank you. Your witness. Barbara, I think the fight with your husband really happened. You couldn't have made all that up. The question is, when did this fight occur? The night of March 9th. How do you know? Uh, it was a wash day, Monday, and March 9th was a Monday. So was the 16th. Now, when you moved in with Santo and Perkins, you knew they were fugitives? Yes, but I didn't have Didn't that yet. seem dangerous to you? Joining forces Honor. with people who were... Excuse me, living with the kind of... Honor. All right, sleeping in the same room with people who were wanted for murder. I didn't have anywhere else to go. Really? Nowhere? In all the 48 states. Why was that, Barbara? Because I was broke. I was flat broke. My husband had left. I mean, what was I supposed to do? I don't suppose you thought of getting a job. Objection. That's true. You got a job in mind for a woman with, with a record and broken parole? The docks, maybe? How about the railroad? There are always jobs. For men, there's jobs. You got track walkers, longshoremen. You, nobody cares if you're on parole, but you got to be a man. Mrs. Graham. You say you were on parole. Of what crime were you convicted? Perjury. I'm sorry? Perjury. <laughs> you will recess until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. All rise. Afraid to come forward? Yes, I was. Was it a narcotics matter in which you were involved? Yes. Thank you. You may examine. <coughs> Are you sure the fight with your wife took place on the night of March 9th? Oh, yes, sir. Last night, didn't you tell me that the fight with your wife occurred around the 9th, that it might have been the 7th? I don't remember. When the fight occurred or what you told me last night? What I said last night. My notes indicate you said you weren't sure. Do you remember not having told me that? Am I mistaken? I told you before. I don't remember. Mr. Graham, how is it possible you don't remember what you said last night, but you remember everything that happened last March 9th in the sharpest detail? Proper rhetorical, not designed to induce evidence. Sustained. You need not answer. I'm finished with this. 
Has anybody seen Jack Brady? I'm supposed to meet him here. I think he's upstairs in records. Don't I know you? You work around the courts. Well, not exactly. Not for pay. Oh, uh, you're a volunteer. Well, I do try to help out. There's so much unhappiness around here, and I just kind of feel that those of us who are fortunate enough to have really nice homes, we have you an obligation kidding? to... You This is bloody bad, Counselor. Miss Graham, I'm Al Matthews. Jack Brady's asked me to handle your appeal. I don't blame him. He's in pretty bad shape, huh? Men in my life don't stay around very long. That might be an exception. Might. You look pretty healthy to me. Hey. If I decide to sign on, I go the full cruise. But first, I need to know the ship's got somewhere to go. I want to talk to Jack, and I want to read the transcripts. I didn't do it, Mr. Matthews. That help you any? It's better than if you said you did it. Maybe I'll be seeing you. I hope so. Yeah, come in. Mr. Matthews, I'm Edie Bannister. I hope I'm not interrupting you. The rumor is you'll be handling the Graham appeal. Will you? Well, should I? <laughs> You're asking me. Well, you wrote a side of it. Um, I thought there might be a reason. Well, my editor says it's because I got more ink that way because I do have that side to myself. And maybe it started that way. It was like picking the Cubs to win the pennant. If I'm right, I'm the one who picked the winner. If I'm wrong, who remembers? But then I became a Cubs fan. Why? I spent a lot of time with her. I sort of got to know her. What's she like? <laughs> well, I wouldn't cash her check. And if I had a boyfriend, I wouldn't trust her with him. Or him with her. She's got the morals of a mink. She's probably a compulsive liar. I doubt she's done a day's honest work outside the can. She works angles, and she cons people. But she's no killer. Edie. You don't have to be a killer to kill once. Suppose you went out on that job just because Santo and Perkins figured the old lady would open the door for a woman. And the old lady wouldn't tell him where the money was. And she was due for a piece of it. She lost her temper. Is that the transcript, John True's testimony? I haven't come to it yet. Well, read it carefully. The part where he says she was pistol whipping the old lady. Let's try it here. You be Barbara and I'll be Mrs. Monaghan. Now, True says she grabbed her by the throat and clobbered her with a gun. Try it. Yeah? You got the weapon in your right hand. Sure, it's uh, like pounding in a nail. You hold the nail in your left it's hand. just the way True said she did it. Left hand to hold the throat, which means she hit with the right. Only Barbara is left-handed. Oh, come on. I mean, someone would have noticed that. Didn't she write notes to Brady during the trial using her right hand? They taught her that way at school. They made her write with her right hand, but she does everything else, Lefty. She holds a mascara brush in her left hand. Would she hold a pistol in her right? Hmm. Well, that might help. Should have been shown at the trial. I mean, it's hardly the basis for an appeal. You got an extra copy of that? The volume with John True's testimony. Help yourself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can't thank you enough for bringing in Mrs. Cooley. <laughs> Isn't he just the sweetest? <laughs> I could be with him all the time. Uh, okay. uh. They're not going to, uh, are they? Oh, well, they're planning on it. They've already set a date. They're transferring me to San Quentin tomorrow. It's a man's prison. Why there? Well, the newspapers say it's because there's a plot to kill me or spring me or something like that. Barbara, time's up. Come here, sweetheart. Come on. Oh, boy, you're getting so big. How you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Good. The company's going to transfer me to Hawaii. <laughs> That's 
nice. You ever hear from Mr. Cooley? Yeah, he called. He uh, wanted to try again. <laughs> I told him to stuff his reconciliation up his nose. I'm going to Hawaii. <laughs> Good for you. Mommy's gonna come get you real soon, and this time it's gonna be for good, okay? Okay. Hi. Something new's been added? Is it the death row by a solved sister? To talk about a woman who's on her way to death row. Barbara. Tell me something. Do you want to get her off or just beat the cyanide? Well, I always thought she might not be guilty. It's a thought. Will you help me? Maybe you'll sleep better. I sleep like a baby. When you see her, give her my best. What about John True? Should I give him your best? That man has a real passion for justice. You've got to really know him to hate him. And I've known him forever. How long is that? Years. Years back, he and I and Santo blew a safe in a saloon in Coeur A couple hundred bucks and a cheap diamond ring. We stayed in a motel on the Washington side. But he said at the trial that he met you for the first time right before the Monaghan thing. I heard him. They gave me a good seat. I wouldn't believe him if he said he took a bath and I saw him getting out of the tub. So long, babe. See you in church. Goodbye, Barbara. Good luck. Miss McCool will take you to San Quentin. Let's move it. Clifford, it's cold and I haven't had breakfast. Will you tell him, Coach? Got any leg irons back there? Shut up. Or you'll do what? <laughs> Boy, lucked out getting you for this trip, didn't I? Get him! Let's move it! I waited across the street, right next to a telephone pole. Mrs. Graham went up to the front door and rang the bell. When I saw the door open, Santo Perkins and myself rushed across the street and went in. But there's only one telephone pole across from that house, and there is no way you can see the front door from there. So? So? So he lied. The one witness that put Barbara in the Monaghan house lied. Only A, it should have come out at the trial, and B, the man could have been mistaken. I suppose I could throw it into the appeal, but it wouldn't get the job done. Well, what about his testimony that he came to L.A. to die for abalone? What about it? It was February. Abalone's out of season. Oh, for God's sake, Steve. The man was an accomplice in robbery and burglary. Would he been bothered by the idea of taking shellfish out of season? Okay, okay. I'll try this. True says, well, Mr. Santo told me Mr. Perkins was a box man. I asked him, did he make apple boxes or what? But he knew Perkins, and he knew what Perkins did for a living, and he knew what a box man was. Is any of this provable? Perkins told me way back they blew a safe up in Idaho for a few bucks and a diamond ring. They spent the night in a motel in Washington. That robbery happened just the way he said it did. I checked. They were registered in that motel. That's better, Reedy. That's an important lie, True saying he didn't know Perkins before the Monahan job. Unfortunately, it doesn't say he also lied about the old lady. 
But isn't a jury entitled to believe if a man lied about one thing, he no, might lie no about way. another? It's just not enough. What about San Francisco? Well, Drew gave a statement there when he was first picked up on the Monaghan case. And how does it compare with his testimony? I don't know. I can't get it. Why? It's not a public document. They say maybe later. Sure. After it's all over. After she's dead and buried. What are you going to tell Barbara? The truth. I'm not looking forward to it. Well, Drew's testimony that he gave to the San Francisco police is not considered a matter of public record. I'm sorry, Barbara. You're sorry. I'm the one that's going to die. Why can't I get a decent record player? Are they afraid I'm going to electrocute myself and die on the wrong day? Or... Hey, hey, come on now, don't quit on me. I mean, we still got a state appeal going, procedural errors, that sort of thing. And if it goes down, I'm going to go into federal court. I'm going to raise the whole issue of entrapment. Okay. I'm not going to quit. Just... Right now... I'd like you to go now. It's nothing personal. Thanks, Warden. Barbara, are you all right? Barbara, your best bet is a direct appeal to the governor. Ask for a commutation. No. I don't beg to be forgiven for something I didn't do. Look, I've done plenty and I've paid plenty. And I don't just mean the jail time. I lost my kids. I got kicked in the face over and over again. And maybe I deserved it. Maybe that's why I could take it. But not this. I got the truth to fight with. They got nothing but gas. Think about it, Barbara. A commutation would mean you'd be alive. I don't want to be alive. I want to live. This isn't living, is it? Is it? Just like the army. Hurry up and wait. It's been a long time, huh? Yeah, but that's a good sign. That's a good sign, I know. See, Al is a fantastic lawyer. There's not a judge in this country that they wouldn't respect him. They're going to listen to Al. How long do you think it's been? I I'm not sure. Well, I mean, it's two hours at least, right? Maybe, Barbara. I'm not sure. Yeah, two hours, that's a good sign. <laughs> I mean, some judge is not going to just sit and, and listen and think, not, not, not for two hours, and then just turn around and say, do it, right? I mean, you can't. I think you're right. No, I know you're right. Yeah. What, what would be the point? What would be the point? They, they got annoyed. I, I, I didn't do it, huh? Warden, is there some word now? Barbara, the federal appeal has been denied. The governor's office just called. There'll be no more delays. So then, we, we go now. Barbara's nurse gave me this. You're not supposed to get it till after, but I'll be off duty after. What's that? Security, please know that with my heart, I appreciate everything you've done for me. Since the
crackling between them smiles and stomach up and looks perpetually into her eyes. Le bras mes dames et des montées et tournées en vie et ni l'être même. Quand on tient les marins de son sac ou dans le corps. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. It's easier. How would you know?
go looking for the fun you missed. Learn how to make a good wife, find a good man and do it. Believe me, it's the only way. The only way, Miss Bain? For you, Barbara, it is. Do your best with the coolies. I will. Miss Bain, thank you for everything. Tonight. I got my draft notice. I can't sit around waiting. Well, maybe you should enlist. Hey, Barb. I didn't mean. I'll be waiting, huh? Mrs. Cooley wanted me to tell you that uh, her sister's back went out and she went up to Ventura to help out. She'll be back tomorrow afternoon, sure. She won't be back tonight? Tomorrow afternoon, sure. Good night, Mr. Cooley. Uh, hold it. Uh, come on. Let's uh, have a nightcap. Um, I have to get the kids off to school in the morning. It's not that late. Mr. Cooley, I need this job. That ain't all you need. Don't do this. Oh, still. Please don't do this. I said, hold still. Please don't do oh, this. Oh, still. Oh, Why, you don't little... Don't you come near me. If I yell, those kids are going to come downstairs, and they will ask questions, and I will have answers. Don't you go out and leave those kids. I will be back in the morning to get them off to school. Now, if Roy wets the bed, don't holler at him. He's going through a stage. Barbara. Jerry, this is your lucky night. I pronounce that they are husband and wife. Whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> well said, Reverend. No, oh, you thank you indeed. Uh, a little libation. Yeah, sounds good. Oh, Cheer up, brother. It's a wedding. Good luck, Barbara. What's a small thing like parole compared to the happiness of a bride and a mother-to-be? Look, if they were worth anything, I'd have sold them ten minutes after I got them, Jay, but they're kind of pretty. Take them. What time is it? I thought we weren't going to talk about that. How are you feeling, Barbara? How do you think? What's that? If you slip your jacket off, I'll fit this to your blouse. It's a stethoscope. The hell it is. Where, where's, the, where's the part you listen to? Oh, right. I'm on the inside, you're on the outside. Huh? Huh? Okay. What time is it? Barbara. I didn't ask you how long I had left. I just said, what time is it? 9.30. Where's Father Charles? He'll be here. I don't want to get nervous while I'm going out there. Would you just give me a shot of something, you think? Barbara, I don't think I can do that. Gordon, would you tell him to give me a shot of something? I'm not going to get hooked. Yes, you can have one if you need it, but not now. Barbara, the state court has given you a stay. Uh, well, I, I don't know. State court? I don't, I don't, my, my attorney said it, said it was a federal court. What, a state? Well, all I know is it's a state court of appeals. Well, I, I guess it doesn't really matter, huh? As long as somebody can see what they're doing to me. How long is the stay? I'm sorry, I have no idea. Oh. Barbara, I'm sorry about the uncertainty. I hate last-minute stays. It's easy for you to say. I'm sorry. Look, is there anything I can do? 
I need to be alone. Could, could, could I just be alone? Of course. Uh, for as long as possible. Huh? Mr. and Mrs. Cooley from Oxnard. How do you do? Has she ever done housework? Uh, oh, I, I mean, a wayward girl. Uh, we take care of our rooms here. But I'm a really good cook. Oh, oh well, I do the cooking. <laughs> we have three little ones. Uh, how do you feel about that? I like children. <sighs> She's awfully pretty, Miss Payne. I mean, will she stay with us? <laughs> She'll have to stay for a year, Mrs. Cooley. We'll take her. Folks, Barbara will meet you out at the gate. We'd like a few minutes to say goodbye. What's wrong, Barbara? I thought you'd be happy. I don't know. I hate housework, Miss Bain. It's part of being a wife. Oh. Well, you want to get married, don't you, and have a family of well, your own? Well, sure, but after? After what? You know what my childhood was all about. Barbara, what I know is it's over. is a dramatization inspired by the life of Barbara Graham. Certain events have been fictionalized.
key, especially since Dad's got his sailing orders. Thank you, Mr. Cooley. Wine, everybody? Ah! Congratulations, Mrs. Henderson. Thanks, <laughs> Remember what I said about not rushing into marriage? Well, forget it, dear. Be happy. I will. And thank you for everything, Mrs. Cooley. And me. Wine? <laughs> oh, the one yes. with the ribbon for the bride. <laughs> you be good to her now, sailor. That's an order. <laughs> Barefoot and pregnant. Ah, that's the trick. Well, you're halfway there. <laughs> that was a beautiful hey, Oh, thank you. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> she hardly ever cries. Well, she naps for about two hours after her lunch. Then she just wakes up happy as a little clown. You'll see. What happened, Barbara? I thought you and my boy loved each other. Well, maybe we did. I guess the marriage just didn't take. Of course, then he went overseas, so... I guess I'm just old-fashioned. My day mothers didn't abandon babies even for a little while. Well, mine did. You know, I was in and out of foster homes most of my life. And even when I did live with my mother, my father was the only one that ever cared about me. And he died when I was eight years old. And my mother, she turned around and she you said to me, she said, stop bawling. He's not your real father anyway. No good here. Why don't you guys go sink Tojo's fleet? Huh? <laughs> hey, babe. Plant you now, dig you later. Okay? <laughs> She had a hot fudge seven. That's right, hot fudge, but she just picked at it. 
Well, maybe she's counting calories. Huh? One source says red pajamas. Another says she slept raw. Choose one. Emmett Perkins and Jack Santor, who with Barbara Graham were sentenced to die for the savage slaying of Mabel Monahan, spent their last evening on Earth watching Groucho Marx and You Bet Your Life on TV. Arthur, check federal court. Barbara's lawyers applied for a stay. Well, sure, it's a last-minute stay. What other kind do you go for when your client's due to take the gas in less than an hour? Yeah, well, they won't let her see anybody. Well, I'll try it. Well, keep the line open. Captain Paul! Here it is. The icy nerve killer spent her last night in red baby doll pajamas. Captain Paul, could I talk to Barbara? Why not? You're immediate family, aren't you? You know I'm not. You're not? You've been writing like you were sisters. You can see her at the main event. If you stay. I'm staying. What was that? Uh, you don't know? Just setting up for my going away party. You know what? I think we could use some music in here. I don't understand you people. You're getting ready to kill me, but we need music. Right, we do need music. <laughs> need music. How do I look? You look terrific. Yeah, even the people who called me a killer never said I was a lousy dresser. Huh? You know, with the earrings I was concerned about, I almost wore these. But uh, these would be good for you. Why don't you take these? Oh, oh no, Barbara. I couldn't. I mean, your husband might want... Oh, come on. They're not his color. 